It's Madden NFL 23, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. All that and more coming up next. Temps a little hot today at Lincoln Financial Field, but keep in mind it is technically still summer as we get you ready for some football in Philly. Today, rivals square off in the NFC East, and we've got a great matchup between the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. the kicker Jake Elliott ready to get this one started and off we go from Lincoln Financial Field and we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff this will be a touchback so here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game and they'll be led out by the first overall pick from a couple of drafts ago former Clemson Tiger Trevor Lawrence and you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback how about what Trevor Lawrence faced coming out of college? But the good thing for him, he's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior, whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations. He's doing everything in his power to follow through. Lawrence going to put it up right away. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An early statement on the game's first play. 18 yards and a first down. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't, because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers will get involved as this game goes on. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Play action. It's Lawrence. And he'll find Hall. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. And the big guy catches the ball in the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Now a second down and six. Now Lawrence. This will complete to Jerry Judy. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 31-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Now a guy who grew up just south of here across the river, Jonathan Taylor. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. 
On the tackle, it was a West Virginia man, Kaiser White. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Here's Lawrence to throw. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37 yard line. That sack, courtesy of the effort of Hassan Reddick. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. From the shotgun, Lawrence. And that will be incomplete. They weren't scared to let it fly, but he falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Nice job there, forcing that incompletion. This is going to be a fun battle throughout this game, watching him try to take away that area of the field. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This from 54 yards away. Gano's kick is good. And the Giants are off now to a 3-0 lead. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. Knocking through the field goal. Here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This will be fielded inside the five. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Now, for the first time, we get to see this Philadelphia offense led out by their dual threat quarterback now in his third season, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts got the green light as a starter from the Philly organization and took really good steps as the next in line of mobile quarterbacks in the city following names like Michael Vick, Donovan McNabb, and Randall Cunningham. He led the team in all quarterbacks in the NFL in rushing, and he took Philadelphia to the postseason while throwing for over 3,000 yards. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 24. They start on the ground here at Sanders. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. On second and nine. Hurts got his man complete over the middle. It's Watkins. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. It seems like a perpetual search for productive receivers for Philadelphia, but they think that Quez Watkins might be a keeper after his 2021. Earned a starting spot for much of the season and put up over 600 yards while averaging 15 per catch. They're giving the former six-rounder another opportunity and seeing if those numbers will keep growing. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. From the 39, Hurts. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 
Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. But well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. They'll run with Sanders up the middle. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage. Left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Hurts. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. The good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. Throwing his hurts. The connecting here with DJ Shark. And a good tackle there right around the 30. Stops him short of the first down. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. There's another example what defensive coaches constantly preach. Not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Now Jake Elliott, earlier in his career, he beat these Giants with a 61-yarder. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Go a little tennis on I know you. You like to mix it up with sports. Yeah. They crack a forehand back out and they get a backhand. What was the serve? What was return? It, it was a backhand. I like that. Really it's the best top spin on the whole bit. I love it. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And we see James, he will not return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to hell and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Now a throw here to his running back, and he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now we've got a third and three. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. And he will have a Giants first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. 
on third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a giant first down on a gain of 16. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. Up the middle, here's Taylor. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. But they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now Lawrence. That throw taken in by Jamison Williams. And they're going to move it down to inside the 25. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. That's a tremendous group effort there, because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done. And they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping the second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. They run once more with Taylor. And yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your own line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. 59 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. The running game's played a huge part in getting him down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. They'll run here with Taylor. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. 
Jonathan Taylor. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Giants have moved out in front. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? Graham Gano on for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Touchdown here to kick it away. From the six. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. So back onto the field. Here come the Eagles for their second drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. This is complete to Watkins on the slam. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Hurt sets up to throw it. And this is caught. It's Brown. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. And 22 more yards there and another first down. But I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10, right at the 40. Here's Hurts to throw. Looking for A.J. Brown again, and he's got it again. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession as they go to work on a first and goal. 
It's caught by Sanders. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go -goal situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. That's Foley Fadukasi who got in there and finished off the play. He was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. This is a 27-yard attempt here. The kick by Elliott is good, and that'll bring him back within four. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for it. You're exactly right about that, and this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision-making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. to kick it away from the six and a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30 yard line here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates and he's well on his way to a 100 yard game he's already more than halfway there we're only in the second quarter and what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you I had no idea how many yards I had right those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100 he's been working well towards 100 here And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Finding Hawkinson here on the out route. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. They go play action with Lawrence. It's caught by Funches. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. First and 10, Taylor now. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. 72 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Again, it's Taylor. 
two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Lawrence on third down. Got a man. It's Judy complete. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles 37. A nice pickup of 10 means that this drive will stay on track. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Lawrence will throw. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Over the middle, complete to Judy. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Come on now, let's make it happen. Lawrence going to throw again. Escaping the pressure right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Hassan Reddick. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, it took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, it still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Giants on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now Lawrence to throw. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of look at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Gano's kick is good. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13-6. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. 
A touchdown would tie it. They trail 13-6 as they come up with a first and 10. Sanders to begin the drive and not much to speak of call it a one yard gain up to the 26 and the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first the last play got just a yard here second and nine from the 26 they'll fake the give to Sanders and now hurts and on the catch right side this is Sanders and he is going to lose yardage here. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. Well, Brandon, we can see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Well, there were a couple of extra defensive backs in the game, so he really had nowhere to go with the football despite his search for an open receiver. So he has to take off and run for it, but he comes up well short of the line to gain. Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. Kadarius Toney deep for the Giants. Taken in at the 22. A punt of 46, a return of five. And it'll be Giant football first and 10. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. On first down, Lawrence. His throw incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Lawrence. Complete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Here's Lawrence. And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. And the number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. As we check the next-gen stats, you'll see he had precious little time to do anything with the football there. Here comes Rager. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. And they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe somebody to press it a little bit. This might be the case. 
And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Play action. Here's Hurts. Left side here to Sanders. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Hurts. And that is incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Aaron Sipos on to punt as he'll get this one away now. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And New York set to take the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. From the gun, it's Taylor. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Now Lawrence. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. Well, that's a defensive coordinator has got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Here's Lawrence to throw. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lop one toward the bench. Not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. On first and ten, it's Hurts. That one complete, and it's a fumble. And the Giants have it, it's picked up. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball, you know there's gonna be some traffic somewhere, they've gotta put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield.
on the handoff. Taylor stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Second down at five. Looking to throw, Lawrence. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. Now Lawrence. And that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Jamison Williams from six yards away. And the Giants go up by two touchdowns. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Gano now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it was Jamison Williams wrapping things up with a touchdown. Touchdown here to kick it away. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. That swung out wide to Sanders. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Here's Hurts to throw. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. Hurts finding Goddard there. First down, Philadelphia. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you're struggling basketball teams that don't go to the press. You put a press on it, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing his hurts. And Shark hauls it in. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. But I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. On first down, Hurts. 
flush to his right. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Offense. Offense. They were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're just going to pick up a holding call. Hurts sets up to throw it. He's going to drop this down to Sanders, and they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. The Eagles hustling to the line, clock rolling. To throw again on second down, Hurts. And that's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw, eluding the pressure right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on in the end zone for a touchback. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. A pretty good-looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. So we come upon halftime here with the visiting Giants out on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First though, time for a check of the next gen stats from that first half for the Giants. And the ground game has been a big part of why they have this big lead. And you have to figure they'll lean on it a little bit more in the third and fourth quarters. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. ready to see the football first and they trail here as we resume action in this third quarter fielded just outside the goal line now a crease here as he's past the 30 out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter and Charles some things to like about that first half ultimately trailing here but certainly this deficit is manageable so curious to see what adjustments they may have made at intermission as am I because I think things bode well for a possible comeback because I thought a lot of their best reps in the first half came through the passing game they were hitting the open receivers taking whatever the coverage gave them and making it work well for themselves now they just want to pick up the pace of scoring a little bit so I expect them to come out and continue to throw the ball effectively and now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. 
Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's second and a yard. A give running left, it's Sanders. And he'll get up to the 43 yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. That flag accepted and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still first down. The full start backs him up five. First and 15. Off the play fake, here's Hurts. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, You've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. Now they're looking for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. Looking to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. The Eagles send out their punter now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line absolutely ideal from that position you're hoping to get it down inside the 15 inside the five superb Carry by Taylor to start the drive. Had a decent move, but brought down quickly just outside of the five-yard line. Tackle made that time by Brandon Graham. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Throwing on second and eight. Lawrence. This is Smith with a grab. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. 33 yards that time. I guess that answers the question of whether or not they're going to try to play conservative and protect this lead in the third quarter. And I think this is something we're seeing more and more of in the NFL. Teams not playing to protect leads. Teams playing to extend them.
Now the big play pushes him all the way out to the 40 now for first down. Lawrence will throw. And his throw is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. Over the middle, complete to Judy. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Another good completion on the drive as the Giants have a first down. That's another beautiful throw right there. It gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Back to throw again. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. On first down, Lawrence flushed out right. And it's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jarquiski Tart. And the Eagles are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. He's been having a good day so far, but I think he got a little overzealous on that one. Still young in this league. Has to learn to try not to do too much on an individual play because, as we all know, sometimes less is more. And throwing away is preferable to making the big mistake. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. No gain on the play, and that'll make it second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Looking to throw again on second down. Hurts. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard, and he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Giants touchdown. Well, if there was any thought that this thing might turn around for this offense in the second half, I think those thoughts pretty well dashed after that interception return there. It just has not been a good outing for this unit whatsoever. There's no other way to say it. They've been overmatched, haven't performed to the level that they've needed, and that throw there is just going to contribute to this game getting out of hand. Gano for the extra point.